Firebase Summit happened yesterday, and they finally announced some new features that people have been asking for for forever. Let's do a quick recap, and I'll show you the ones I'm most excited about in order. First up, we've got hosting support for server-side rendered frameworks like Next.js, Angular Universal, and so on. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time, because in my Next.js course, we deploy the app to Vercel, even though Firebase is fully capable of hosting it. Now, when you initialize hosting in a Firebase project, it will automatically detect Next.js. Any routes that use git server-side props will be rendered by a cloud function. The same goes for API routes. In addition, when using git static props, it will respect the revalidate option, which means incremental static regeneration works as well. It also supports next image optimization, which it does by deploying a secondary cloud function. That's pretty cool, but another big advantage of using Firebase for hosting is that it can automatically detect the authentication state server-side. That means you can access the current user when using git server-side props. And that's huge if you want to render content server-side for an authenticated user. The second big feature announcement relates to Firestore. It's now possible to run aggregation queries to get a count of the total number of documents in a collection or query. To use it, all you do is make a query like you would normally, and then pass it to this get server count function, which will return the total number of documents from the server without actually reading the data. People have been requesting this feature, myself included, for many years now. But the one question mark I haven't quite figured out yet is how much will it cost? What I know for sure is that it won't cost you a read for every single document in the collection, but I'm not sure if it costs just one document read or something in between. Another thing you'll notice is that in the Firebase console, there's now this query view option. This provides a more efficient way to test and visualize queries in the console. You might also notice a few other options through Google Cloud, like import export, which allows you to repopulate and backup your data with the click of a button, and also time to live, which allows you to automatically delete documents based on a certain policy. And that can help you keep your database at a reasonable size without having to write your own cloud function. Now, another small but game-changing feature for many apps is the ability to access Firestore data directly in your file storage rules. If your app allows users to upload files, this will make it much easier to lock down files based on the current user's data. Speaking of users, authentication is now more tightly integrated with Google's identity platform. It opens the door to things like multi-factor authentication, which I created a pro tutorial on in the past, but now it's easier than ever. My favorite thing, though, is that it now has blocking actions to run server-side code before a user account is created or before someone signs in. For example, if you have an enterprise app, you may only want users with a certain email to be able to sign up, in which case you could implement a blocking function to ensure that only valid emails are allowed in. Identity Platform can handle pretty much any use case you can imagine, but the one drawback is that it's not free like the rest of Firebase Auth, and it's not very cheap if you're using OpenID Connect or SAML. In any case, the final feature that I want to mention here is the Extensions Marketplace. Extensions for Firebase have been around for a while, but it's kind of been a closed off system. They're now launching a marketplace where anybody could potentially build an extension, and that opens the door to all kinds of specialized features that could be built by anyone who wants to extend the platform. Currently, it's not totally open to the public, but that will happen in the future. This hasn't been a complete list of all the new features, but these are just the ones that caught my eye. Over the next few weeks, I'll be implementing some of these into my courses, so make sure you are subscribed here for more updates. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.